You're listening to The Invisible Addiction, investigating problem gambling in the UK 2020. I recently shared my own experience with problem gambling. Lots of people got in touch wanting to find out more. When did gambling go from being fun to a problem? Where did you get help? How did you recover? So the aim is to provide you with more information about problem gambling and to highlight the effects of addiction to younger people. In this podcast series, I'll be speaking to a number of guests to hear their perspective on this highly emotive and often taboo subject. Problem gambling, after all, is the invisible addiction. In this episode, I speak with a woman whose partner suffered from problem gambling. I want to find out whether she recognised any signs of his gambling. How did she find out? What effect did this have on the relationship? Okay, joining us on the other end of the line today is Shanika. She's very kindly agreed to um, join us today in a discussion about the other side of gambling and the effect it can have on relationships um, itself. So, Shanika, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. I've been better, but not too bad. <laughs> no, thank you for um, thank you for joining today. I mean, um, as I say, it's going to be. It'll be quite conversational um, as opposed to like a strict interview. So um, I really appreciate you coming on today. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of tough questions um, and, and things may, you, you might be uncomfortable talking about. So if there's anything at all that you're not comfortable talking about, please just say and, you know, we'll bat them away and things like that. Um, no so, so perhaps we could just start off with... Um, Maybe if you just want to sort of t- talk about your background and experience, like what you do and, and things like that. Yeah, so I work for a property interior company called AJI, um, and we work with property developers across sort of London um, and international. So my job is to um, manage the design projects with the design team. So I pitch and get the large projects, um, and then I cover. Um, central London and then international and um, Hong Kong and Singapore um, but yeah no I enjoy it I love I love my job so I'm quite lucky. I was going to say it's um you're, you're very kind to give up your time and you're um, what is probably a busy schedule right now. Yeah although at the moment I sort of slowed down obviously because of um, everything going on at the moment so um, yeah it's been nice to concentrate on other things like exercise and seeing friends and family so that's been quite nice yeah. I was going to say, um, Shanika and I, for the listeners, Shanika and I, Shanika and I were talking. We were talking, weren't we, quite a lot? And um, you, 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 you've been suffering with a little bit of, we think, what is it, COVID? Bit of COVID nineteen symptoms. Well, that's what they're saying. I mean, I don't know if I, I don't know if it's just a general virus, but I, yeah. When I spoke to the doctors, they were like, yeah, I think you, I think it's pretty sure that you've probably had it, but. Um, yeah, I'm going with that anyway. That's what that's what I say. <laughs> well, you look and you sound great. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. That's always a start. That's always a start. Okay, all right. Um, well, I don't know. I don't think there's any easy way to sort of start this conversation. I suppose, um, other than to say, you know, I suppose I just want to pick your brains a little bit about how gambling has affected you. Affected you. Um, so again, just for the listeners' benefit. So Shanika, you you know Shanika is not a gambler. Um, she doesn't suffer from addiction with gambling. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. But um, but yeah. But um. But you you've certainly come into close quarters yeah. with someone that has um had a uh, had um. Am I fair to say a problem with gambling or just gambling issues? Yeah, gambling issues. Um. I would say it was, yeah, I, I, cause I, because I don't gamble myself, it's actually, for me, it wasn't that easy to spot the signs that someone does it. Um, it was more the fact that um, my partner, or well, not ex-partner's friends circle tended to do that quite a lot. Um, and then it was sort of through conversations that I ended up realising that he was a gambler himself. Um and has quite an addictive personality which leads to other addictions such as drug addiction and things like that so mm. yeah that's kind of where it sort of started and I kind of saw that there was a bit of a problem there yeah mm. Mm. 
I mean, I mean, you touched on like the fact that you found out within his friendship group. Um, perhaps yeah. they were kind of gambling, and, and in fact, one of the one of the listeners got in touch and, and and actually asked me. He sort of said, you know, do I find it hard being part of like WhatsApp groups with lads? That most of the conversations are about betting, yeah. um, you, you know, horse races and yeah. football. Horse racing like is a big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, yeah. So, like my partner at the time, so he and his friends they do quite a lot of go to like horse racing and stuff um and they tend to bet on quite a lot of money so that like, i don't i don't really do much gambling or betting or anything like that but i would sort of you'd only put like a little bit on it at a time um but they're putting on big numbers when they when they're betting um so that was sort of where i but i kind of saw that more as a social thing and didn't, again not really seen it as a problem mm. but his closest friends um from talking to their partners they sort of said oh yeah i've had to i kind of managed his, his money now because it's got to the extent that if he wins quite big that she won't see half they won't see half that money or go with him sort of like that day um wow. and it, it, it's things like that and also um not just with horse racing but sort of a lot of the online it's so accessible isn't it just being on your phone yeah. um and i think not all men are like this but i think if you have got quite a laddy group of friends who tend to do that then it's very it's very hard for them to get out of that routine of, of doing things like that i think um mm -hmm. and like you're saying about whatsapp um he's definitely got his group of guys that he speaks to and they're always sort of sending videos and betting on this or sending a link for this and um yeah so it's quite a it's a vicious circle really yeah yeah it's, it's quite hard to um to get out of actually uh like once you're in it and it's i don't know it's it's maybe part of the kind of the, the lad culture um talking about like beer yeah <laughs> you know sport. beer women gambling yeah. <laughs> you've got it you got it down yeah I mean, yeah exactly that, that seems to that seems to be uh, it so um, so was it was it as i say was it just like was it the horse racing for him or was it the online thing or i think the horse racing so horse racing more so in the summer because of all the events that are going on um and also, I love going to the races and having a good time. I think a lot of people do. Um, but again, I guess his circle, they tend to do it, yes, for fun, but it, then it goes a bit beyond that because it's sort of, for me, I think it's large amounts of money that they're, that they're putting down. Mm. You're talking sort of grand's worth rather than wow. sort of like a couple hundred quid. Um, so... Yeah, and I and I think that the difference. I'm not saying that it's okay, but I think if you've got the money to do to do it, then it's okay. But more okay, although it's not. But with his situation, is that he doesn't have that sort of money to be able to do to do that, mm. um, which makes it even worse. Yeah. Um, yeah so uh, it was horse racing, but also yeah, just doing the odd online. Um, online thing um i didn't see witness that as much mm. but i think it's quite easy to hide online as well i mean mm. it, everything that's on your phone it's quite it's quite easy to do that isn't it um yeah. so but yeah he was uh, fairly the whole reason it came about more so me knowing about it was when we were talking about sort of finances and obviously i was buying my my property um and had a relationship that had broken down he, he's got a son um and he moved in with his parents and and so there was that going and he was looking to sort of get somewhere and we were just talking about obviously getting somewhere together and then we were just sort of talking about things like that and then he just literally said i yeah he said i've obviously he said yeah because i've had a gambling problem mm. and i was like what have you like, that's news to me and he said yeah and he said well it's not something that i would obviously just come out and say yeah. um and that's sort of how it how it came about and then as once i was aware of it obviously you start 
it makes more sense as to what's going on. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. it sounded like it sounded like that was. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to put myself in his shoes in, the, in, in a way, but um, I suppose it might have been a little bit of a weight off his shoulders to have got that out in the open. Uh, on on the one hand, to you that obviously yeah. he said he he suffers from you know from his gambling, but then on the other hand, you've got that I suppose probably I guess embarrassment you know that oh my god actually look I, I actually don't have much money at the moment or I haven't yeah. you know I haven't been yeah good with and my I money. Think that's the other thing that I always well confused me I guess is that he um, he's got quite a good job he's self-employed. But he, I would know, I don't know how much he might earn that month. But then suddenly he would go from having this to then not having much at all. Mm. And you just think, what the hell? If you're not, if you haven't got much of an outgoing and you're not, you know, you haven't, you don't own your own property or not that that's a big deal. But do you know what I mean? You haven't got any huge responsibility. You just think, well, where are your funds going? If, mm. if you know, um, so yeah, it, it, it was a concern in, in that spectrum and as I said I I don't know whether addiction obviously leads to other addictions because um, he likes to party he likes to have a good time and that leads to other addictions such as drug addiction and things like that so um, yeah yeah I definitely I definitely can relate to that a little bit and um, uh, I mean for, for me you know it's again it's probably just the connotations of like gambling and being at the races you dress up and you're yeah. mixing with people from I suppose all backgrounds and stuff yeah. but there's that aspiration um it's quite flashy uh again for Definitely. me it was like casinos for me it was the casinos so again that element of kind of trendiness and it was cool and um I kind of felt like somebody so yeah I can I can certainly see how it can creep up but I don't know if did you notice maybe like any changes in his like behavior or like because this is the thing about gambling is it's quite like invisible like you've already said it's quite like you know you can hide the on you can hide like lots of stuff um it's not until like you check like the bank accounts and you kind of go oh my god like it's actually this is where the money's going or whatever but yeah did you yeah did you notice anything anything that changed like within <laughs> It was more, I, I, not necessarily, I think the only the only way I sort of saw that anything was going on is just in terms of when you would be, I don't know, middle of the month or he would be quite down about something or mm. um, he'd be like, I've got no funds. And you're like, how have you got no, have you got no funds? Like, you got paid not that long ago. Don't get me wrong. Like, I splash out things I probably shouldn't. We all do, don't we? But mm. um yeah, I would say not necessarily changes in behaviour that were obvious that I would be like, oh, it's definitely the fact that he's gambling. Because as I said, if you're not a gambler, I don't think it's that obvious to know that someone that someone's got a gambling addiction mm. um, or gambling problems, should I say? So um, yeah, he was yeah, I guess up and down, and I think it was a mixture for him for a bit of everything really the fact that he had probably you know gambling issues and also other addictions as well I mean that mix them together isn't a good yeah. isn't a good case yeah, I mean, really I mean they do say apparently like people with um that uh that, that get into gambling and stuff like that I mean again like statistically quite likely to get into substance abuse yeah. and experience definitely like, yeah, uh, yeah. other things you know like that, that come with that and then depression and anxiety yeah. and stress and and of course that then leads itself to other things you know that can maybe lead to like relationship breakups and certainly in my case that's what happened but um yeah, did, me. yeah I mean, it's, it's, it's awful because like, you know, you're speaking very candidly and and I'm asking a lot of personal questions and I mean I, I don't know I don't know him so I hope if if he is listening to this my god I I I want it to be, you know, this is to, to help the world, you know, to, to help I know, others. yeah. So, um, yeah, I do feel a bit, a little bit, what's the word, you know, teetering around the edge of, of, of you know, no, don't worry. comfortable, you know, if it's comfortable or not. But um, did you, I mean, what, what effect did it have on you? Like, in terms of, were you, 
I don't know, obviously, I guess you might have been a bit shocked, but, like, were you... I don't know, because there's a taboo nature of, like, gambling, I guess, because it's like, oh, we don't know much about this, but, you, you know, you, I, I just wanted to kind of get in your psyche, like, were you embarrassed or were you shocked? Did you want to help him? Or, I don't know, what was this sort of situation like? Yeah, I think I was more sort of, like... I was I just the first thought was like oh shit because I thought if we're looking at when you're looking at a future I guess with someone you're saying for me obviously I was in the middle of buying a property so I was thinking I obviously want to be doing something like that with someone who's got their shit together so to speak mm. and then I thought the fact that that was obviously giving me alarm bells of the fact that there'd be financial difficulty there because of the fact that he would have gambling issues mm. um so I think that's what I sort of first thought um and I just didn't really see it when we first sort of spoke about it, I didn't really see it as that much of an issue I guess because it I just thought well okay and, and then I think he also said that it was something that he used to do quite a lot but not as much now mm. so then you're like okay so he's obviously dealing with it um, and I don't get me wrong, I do think that he doesn't do it half as much as what he used to. Yeah. Um, but there's obviously still um, it's still that issue there. And I think, like I said, if your circle is a circle that does things like that, it's very hard to get out of um, yeah. to get out of that because if they're your best friends and that's what you're used to, it's a lifestyle, isn't it? So um, yeah, it's a difficult one. Definitely, definitely. Do you know? Um, I mean, again. Do you, uh, yeah, I'm asking. Sorry, I'm asking so so many personal questions. It's no, like it's fine. Properly diving in here, but um, I mean, do do you think he he was at like he's at the place now where he's like, I've got a problem. I need to kind of get help, or is it still maybe a little bit prior to I, that? I you know? I think the um so obviously the gambling thing's one thing uh, because obviously you've got that, but I think obviously like I said with him having an addictive personality, um, that he has got um issues with. Um, drug abuse and things um, I think the problem is is that no he doesn't really he's aware that he's got things that he needs to work on but he also he, he will say that that's his personality that mm. there's nothing he can he can do about that and mm. I don't know I just it's a bit of a poor excuse really I think yeah I, but then it's the real, or it's the fact that he does know, he does know, I think, that he's got these, but it's doing something about it, isn't it? It takes quite a lot to yeah. to pull yourself to do, and it doesn't matter how many times you kind of talk to someone about issues like that, they've got to kind of come to the realisation themselves, and, yeah. um, and also you become a nag to them, and someone that they don't, I know for us, like, he... I don't know, probably sees me as someone that is nagging him and not wanting to, ha not wanting him to have fun and that's not the case. It's just that you kind of think you've got to grow out of or get help in some way at some point. Um, yeah, I mean... Yeah, so... I, I, I don't know, again, like for me it was really hard because at the time like I knew I knew I had a problem and stuff um, or I knew it was like, actually deep down this is not, this is not great. But it was almost like I was waiting for something to happen or waiting yeah, for someone definitely. to help me and stuff. But I guess like the thing is like family members or, you know, boyfriends, girlfriends, you know, relationships, like actually it, it's it's hard because for you, you know, you're not an expert on this and you know, it's like you wanna help, but how much help as I say, I can imagine it being incredibly difficult, like how much help you give or if you're if you're nagging and stuff like that. But um I mean, for me, this was like years, it spanned years, you know, so I guess yeah. it's really hard to change your habit as well, because if you are addicted to something, it's like, it's a, a chemical thing in your, you know, in yeah. your brain and stuff. So it's, it's so hard to kind of get yourself out of it. Um, I mean, how, how, how are things between you now? I mean, is it, is it like, you know, was this, do you think this led to a relationship breakup or? I think. There's, obviously, it's not just that. That's not just why. Um, but, but I think, yeah, element. It, it's it's definitely had an impact. I think for the reasons that we've broken up for now or for, for whatever for long mm. is because 
where um, he's got the issues with um, gambling and, as I said, like drug abuse, mm. I feel that it's a, the whole thing altogether is just affecting how he is as a person and his moods and the way that he thinks mm. and your whole perspective on life, I guess, really. Mm. Um, and, yeah, it probably... It has because at the moment he's not someone that's willing to change or to take responsibility, mm. and there's not a lot you can do. There's not a lot to work with when it's when it's like mm. that. So um, mm. yeah, it's it's tough yeah. to kind of know what to do because there's obviously there's, there's so many little layers and stuff like that. And again, just resonating with what you've said there and, and and thinking of him, like I can resonate with that because you have you know feelings of like lack of self-worth you feel like yeah no confidence no self-belief you think you're like and then the layers of guilt and the shame and oh my god and and stuff like that so I can't I can I can empathize with him I can imagine he's in probably quite a quite a tough place right now or whatever but as I say it's you yeah you've got to want to take yourself out of that situation and that is so hard to do so hard to do it but, is yeah. and it's like you said it's whether i mean i've got friends who've got um, addiction or drug abuse addictions or whatever but it's you know it's like a lot of people say until something dramatic happens or something that makes you shift into another mindset you've got no other reason to change have you and i mm. think for him i don't know i feel like it something big would have to happen I don't know if losing me is enough but something big would have to happen for him to have the realisation that mm. something's got to change and that, yeah that it has to sort of come from him um, yeah Cause you mm. can't really help someone that doesn't really want to be helped so that's the problem no that's def definitely right definitely right I mean um, before we kind of wrap things up is there anything else that you wanted to add or um, anything else that you can think of maybe maybe you could give some advice or um have you got anything that you would like to share with people that are listening in perhaps they think their partner might be um suffering from gambling problems and things like that i mean have you got any tips or, or anything that you could add there yeah i just think it's they've just got to feel like they can be open and on and open and honest with you um i know when um my ex-partner spoke to me about things i I didn't judge him when he was telling me about it. I just sort of heard him out. Um, and I guess, ultimately, if you're with them, you want to support your partner, so you'll do anything that you can to try and help. Mm. Um, I just think it's important that they feel like they can open up to you and that you're not going to judge them for it. Um, and, yeah, and offer support, I guess, as, as much as you can. Um, that's all you can do, really, because unless that person doesn't, it's a difficult one, because they've got to realise that they have got a problem to a certain extent. Um, but for them to even want to talk to you about it must mean that they do recognise they've got issues um, in that area. So yeah, I would just say just to be supportive and, and to them to know that if, when they're ready to talk to you about it, then you're sort of there, really. I guess, mm. yeah. No, I, I think you've been um, you've been you've been incredibly brave uh, talking about all this sort of stuff, and um, I think it's yeah, I, I can imagine it's it's very raw, obviously, still for you. So um, yes, I just want to say like you know, thank you for for being so open and and honest. I think really, and I I I mean, like I keep saying to everyone. Uh, with the, with these interviews and, and the whole series and stuff, I think the the main aim is just to help others out there, and um, you know, hopefully, someone out there is listening in and um, they can they can resonate with what you've said. And you know, I think yeah, I think what you've said is is has been really helpful. Um, and um, yeah, I just want to go on record and say thank you for like giving up your time and and being as I say being so open no that's fine thank you for having me <laughs> <laughs> you're very welcome well I hope things work out and um thank you know you. I don't know if as I say if if this is the end of the line or, or you know things things will kind of get back on track so um as I say I, I can imagine it being incredibly hard so um you're very kind and uh you know thank you for 
I must have said thank you about 500 times now. Uh, I'm like, how do I finish? Welcome. How do I finish such a hard conversation? <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as it helps people, that's the main thing, isn't it? I think at yeah. the end of the day. So, um, yeah, no, it's a pleasure. Absolutely fine. Okay, thanks very much, Shanika, and I'll see you soon. Okay. Thanks, okay. Alex. Bye. I can only go on record again to thank Shanika for speaking so openly about a very raw topic of discussion. She's really helped us build a picture of what it's like being in a relationship with someone who suffers from problem gambling. I mean, there's so much to come out of the conversation. I think one of the main things for me is that, you know, is, is the harm that problem gambling brings, not only to the gambler, but obviously the, you know, the people around them. And, um, I mean, if we, if we just take a moment to think about the harm it brings to the gambler, then obviously it can lead to lots of problems like financial debts, the side effects, so, you know, drug abuse, um, poor mental health, um, you know, things like depression and, you know, suicidal thoughts. Gambling addicts are three to four times more likely to take their own lives than any other type of addict. I mean, that is an alarming statistic. And I mean, if we just spend a moment to think about the harm it brings to other people, then it's the shame, the embarrassment, the guilt, the connotations of weakness, the gambler being selfish. I mean, it's no wonder why problem gambling is seen as a taboo subject. And the impact it has on others around you, especially your family. As a person with a gambling addiction, it's hard to firstly accept you have a problem, but then to actually go and get help is incredibly difficult. I can't tell you how sucked in you are to the addiction. It's like being in a bottomless pit, just you're unable to see the walls to climb to get out. So what I'm really now interested in is finding out how and where people can get help in the UK. Let's find out in episode four.